guys myself bhavani in this video i'll be discussing about copper copper will be discussed under this headings that is introduction copper containing enzymes daily requirements major diet resources metabolism functions abnormal metabolism and finally its toxicity copper is a essential trace element that is a micronutrient which is required for proper functioning of organs and metabolic processes copper containing enzymes are celluloplasmin cytochrome oxidase cytochrome c tyrosinase lysyl oxidase allosynthase monoamine oxidase and finally phenol oxidase daily requirements for adults is 1.5 to 3 mg per day and for children it is 0.5 to 2 mg per day major dietary sources are cereals meat liver nuts and green leafy vegetables you need to remember that milk is a poor source of copper copper metabolism copper is absorbed from duodenum that is intestine phyllates zinc and molybdenum decreases copper uptake excretion is mainly through bile urine does not contain copper in normal circumstances so to brief up copper as i said you it is absorbed from intestine and it is excreted through bile that is in stool daily excretion is to 5 mg per day and it undergoes portal circulation the main gene which is responsible for copper metabolism is atp7b and you need to know that celluloplasmin copper it is required for its storage and albumin is required for transportation to the whole body plasma copper that is the amount of copper present in the plasma is 100 to 200 mg per day 95% of copper is tightly bound to celluloplasmin whereas 5% is loosely bound to albumin and as i said you celluloplasmin is required for storage and albumin is required for its transport normal concentration of serum celluloplasmin is 25 to 50 mg per deciliter in plasma celluloplasmin is the important copper containing protein which is also called as serum peroxidase coming to its functions the main important function of copper is its iron transport copper is an integral part of celluloplasmin which catalyzes the conversion of ferrous ion to ferric ion and you need to note that that is iron can be transported only when the iron is in the form of ferric ion synthesis of hemoglobin as a constituent of allosynthase formation of collagen elastin and cross linking as a constituent of lysyl oxidase synthesis of melanin as a constituent of tyrosinase catecholamine synthesis as a constituent of dopamine oxidase and finally copper acts as an anti antioxidant copper functions as a cofactor for antioxidant enzyme that is superoxidase dismutase abnormal metabolism of copper first is the wilson's disease wilson's disease is also known as hepatolenticular degeneration it is a rare disorder of abnormal copper metabolism and as i said you it is also known as hepatolenticular degeneration which means it affects liver and also brain it is characterized as copper is deposited in abnormal amounts in liver and lenticular nucleus of brain as i said you this may lead to hepatic cirrhosis and brain necrosis low levels of copper and celluloplasmin in plasma with increased excretion of copper in urine can be noticed
Copper deposition in kidney causes renal damage, leads to increased excretion of amino acids, glucose, peptides and hemoglobin in urine. Intestinal absorption of copper in this disease is very high that is about 4 to 6 times higher than normal. As you can see this in brief that is the kidney is affected, heart is also affected, bone undergoes arthritis and rickets and liver undergoes cirrhosis and you can even notice deposition of iron in the eye causes caseous fissures ring and you can see this picture clearly that there is a deposition of iron and there is a formation of ring. This is a picture of liver cirrhosis. Next deficiency is copper deficiency anemia. Copper is essential for formation of hemoglobin. Copper containing ceruloplasmin helps in iron transport. Copper is an integral part of allosynthase, which is the key enzyme in key synthesis. Copper helps in uptake of iron by normoblasts. Copper deficiency is manifested as anemia, that is, there will be decrease in RBC count and cell size will be small, that is, microcytic anemia, you can notice in the picture and cell size is small but hemoglobin concentration is more or less normal. Cardiovascular disease, copper is a constituent of lysine oxidase. It makes cross linkages in elastin. In copper deficiency, elastin becomes abnormal leading to weakening of walls of major blood vessels. This favors aneurysm. Aneurysm is nothing but bulging of vessels and fatal rupture of wall of iota. Menke Kenke hair syndrome. It is an X linked defect which affects only males. Dietary copper is absorbed but not transported to blood due to absence of intracellular ATPase. Symptoms of this disease or syndrome is bone spurs, brittle or kinky hair, feeding difficulties, irritability, lack of muscle tone or floppiness, low body temperature, rosy cheeks, seizures and skeletal changes. Diagnostic tests are you need to measure the levels of serum ceruloplasmin, serum copper levels and skin cell culture needs to be done, x-ray of skull needs to be undertaken and genetic testings may show a change in ATP7A gene deficiency. T treatment usually helps only when started early in the course of the disease. Melanin. As I said you, copper is present in tyrosinase which is necessary for melanin formation. Its deficiency thus leads to hypopigmentation and in extreme cases, graying or grey color of hair. The period of copper deficiency may be marked as alternate white patches, sometimes called flat type of hair growth, where you can notice in this picture. There is a flat type of hair growth. Finally, the last topic is copper toxicity. Chronic toxicity is manifested as diarrhea and blue-green discoloration of saliva. Copper poisoning may result in hemolysis, hemoglobinuria, proteinuria and renal failure. Hemoglobinuria is nothing but blood in urine and proteinuria is proteins in urine. Management of copper toxicity Clinical improvement can be achieved by chelation of copper with D-penicillamine, zinc acetate and tetrathiomolybdate. The combination of zinc acetate and tetrathiomolybdate is effective. Thank you guys. Keep smiling.